Is there shapewear in the suits or like are there additional muscles added to different so, costumes? Yeah, most superheroes wear something. Unless you're flexing all the time, you're going to go a little soft when, when, when fabric's on you. So you can't. You can't do that. So what it does, it just gives you that little extra edge um, no matter how fit you are. I think the first time I really realized that it was uh, Chris Evans on the early Fantastic Four. He's really fit and you put him in spandex and he kind of looked, I don't want to say average because he's not, but it wasn't special. And then we built just a little muscle suit on him and he, and he looked like he should. So when he took his shirt off and he wore the suit, it made sense. Because when he was wearing spandex without a suit, it just didn't quite like match up. Some people like a Black Panther will will build a bit more, uh, Batman a lot more. It varies from suit to suit, but just about I think ninety percent or more of the superheroes wear some sort of a, a muscle suit. How is the wearability of it for Tom Holland? Like, <laughs> um, is it awful? <laughs> is, is it like I can't see anything? Yeah, I don't think any of these <laughs> things are pleasant. But uh, he's a trooper. I think he's he's good. You know, some people more than others. Some people really are not into wearing the suits probably a little better than like a black manta or something oh yeah that that that's got a way i think close to 60 70 pounds and just a lot of layers and hot so yeah spider-man's much more comfortable what's the heaviest suit the manta suit no it's probably batman mech suit and that's 75 ish pounds manta's just behind him I have to imagine, is Manta always the actor? No. <laughs> no, they're usually multiple stunt people because they all have different specialties. Some fight really well, some do wire work, some parkour. They're just different people. Yeah. I think and Spidey, we had at least three to four stunt guys. Are you refitting the suit for each guy? Yeah, you so tailor you them a little for... bit, yeah. You are known for making the Batman head able to turn. Like, what were the challenges to getting the head to be, like, movable? Batman in general was very personal because kind of one of my first breaks into film was doing Catwoman and Batman for the second film. Like everyone, we always thought, well, Batman looks funny because he can't turn. And so when I got to do a Batman, it was the same issue. And then the second time I was up to bat, I go, let me see if I can solve this. So I tried, but I couldn't. And I all, my solution was cutting them into two pieces, a cap and a neck. And it worked, but to me it wasn't Batman, so I abandoned it. And I was thought to myself, if I have ever had the opportunity, I would solve it for real. And then I did get that phone call finally for the Ben Affleck Batman. Basically, the neck was the strongest point in the cowl, and I had to make it the weakest, as if you're turning a rag and twisting it. So I had to secure the head, which was never secured. It was just floating. And the neck was secure, so I had to secure the head. This was secure. Now I had to have the neck collapse in a way it looked like muscle, not just a rag. So basically, that was it. I had to make the strongest point the weakest point and look like anatomy. With about you know two months of R&D and some people I had in the studio with me, we kind of solved it and had Matt Batman for the first time in a cowl be able to turn his head. And that was pretty satisfying. It's interesting to think about the tenor of like different Batman movies, like Tim Burton Batman movie versus mm -hmm. like Zack Snyder Batman movie. You know what I mean? Like how those costumes would want to differ. The early Batmans, I think the first film I didn't work on, but. The imagery was so strong and it's still great. Mm -hmm. I remember inspiring me when I got to come up to bat and do one. And the one I put my biggest stamp on back in the day was the Val Kilmer suit. I think it's called the Panther suit, but it was really clean aesthetic. Now it's kind of old news, but at the time there was nothing like it. Like the extra body shop we did and the aesthetic was just so clean. And for years that was like a standard. And then, you know, things change and taste change and, and technology came up. And then when we got the opportunity to do the newer one with Ben, and it just went back to more gritty and kind of ballsy. And that's what I really was into to, to change that aesthetic. Because the Christopher Nolan ones were more technology-based, a lot of layers. And it was really great, too, but to take it to another level or different level, different place. So the new ones, yeah, I'm curious to see what they do with the, uh, the newest one. How do you hide zippers? Some are actually hidden zippers, so they just close up and go almost away. Other ones that have to be larger, you can't really hide them that way, so you have to feature them. And you'll we'll build certain uh, zipper head pulls that don't look like a zipper head pull. So you're, as long as it doesn't look common, your eye kind of just will kind of forgive it. Mm -hmm. But you're usually trying to put them where zippers aren't. So we'll put them on the sides. Um, so you, you just don't want up, up down the middle, front or back. So we'll kind of just, sometimes, or like Spidey, we had them all the way around the body. And then one halfway up the back. So you have to almost go like a yoga thing to get in it. 
But once you're in and it's all zipped up, yeah, you shouldn't be able to tell where they are. That's kind of gives it away when you can see the entry of a suit. You can't go to the bathroom, but when you, then you're in it, you're in it. Uh, we've worked out that too. We actually do give them hidden zips for relief. You have made masks for musicians, for like Marshmallow and Daft Punk. How is something like that maybe different? My first musicians I worked with were Daft Punk, and it was on Tron. They were so impressed, they asked me if I would start making them. And I think what happens is I make them so well, they don't really need many. I maybe shouldn't build them that well. They take so, care of them. <laughs> yeah, and they're and they're expensive. So yeah, they do take care of them and they last. Now that we're doing like 4K video and Blu-ray, is there higher detail in the work than there was, say, when you started? <laughs> it's pretty much standard now. You have to have texture and depth and more and more. And, and that comes with the screen printing process and other things too, like the Superman. They did a chrome muscle suit and they have a really like almost like a sheer outer suit. So you get that reflectivity. I always strive for like point blank. So when the actors see it, it's that good so they it helps i guess them embody the character so everything i build here i build i guess for high def even before high def i wanted people to see my stuff and and just actually be blown away in person 